Everybody meet Dave. Dave's the national sales rep for Enerdrive. He's also very, very smart. So we have been using Enerdrive systems for what, five years? Five years, yeah. Five years, and you guys clearly know this because whenever you have a question, you tend to come to us. We have a whole bunch of questions that you guys have asked us to ask Dave. Keep sending them through because Dave's hanging out with us for the whole year. <laughs> he's coming to camp, so he's there to answer all your questions. No, we've got all your questions, and there were so many. We're doing this over like three or four or five episodes. In yes. Episodes. Enerdrive is really a mobile power solutions business first and foremost. That's our strength. We started out just specialising in chargers and monitors and converting yeah. power, so inverters, yeah. you know, DC to AC. But we've grown so much more since those days. Mm. For many, many years now, in fact, we were the first to bring out a really specific built-for-purpose lithium solution in Pro Series. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's progressed and progressed and progressed to the point that we've been able to implement all the successes from that into our BTEC lithium batteries, yep. which has been a wonderful story. And awesome. You know, yep. and, and that's going exceptionally well. And we've really solidified ourselves as industry leaders in this mobile power business that we're all yep. so into nowadays. The industry is exciting. Everyone wants a caravan. Everyone wants a four-wheel drive. It's mm -hmm. no longer acceptable just to, you know, <laughs> have an SP It's not, device. is it? No. Like, who <laughs> Those days do are done, yeah. It just sounds yeah. like hard work. Yeah. You know, and Enerdrive's really proud to be a part of that journey you know yeah. we're, we're running refrigeration but and we're providing power solutions to do that obviously via solar via vehicle we're monitoring batteries we're converting power to run air fryers and <laughs> god knows what other crazy loads of hair dryers and straighteners hair dryers exactly <laughs> and, and that's who we are yeah. our success has always been built on our service and, yeah. and what we provide to all customers not just our direct customers business to business but also you guys, people who use caravans, who use our power systems in yep. four-wheel drives, um, that's our strength and that's probably what keeps me in Enerdrive. I'm really proud of yep. that part of Enerdrive. We're, we're well connected with our customers all the way to end user level. Uh, there's nothing, nothing greater than, you know, every day nowadays on, on social media we receive all this positive feedback yep. and it's mostly centric around how we support our customers. Yep. And, uh, that's our strength. That's the progression has been huge and we are so proud to be part of it as well. Absolutely. We love being yeah. a part of the journey and we love yep. partnering with guys like yep. yourselves. You know, like what you guys are doing is phenomenal. Yep. You're, you're living full time in a caravan and you're not even unique anymore. Yep. This is normal. It's a common thing now, isn't this it? This is Very normal. much so. Yep. And uh, yep. for us, obviously, it's all about keeping you guys on the road. Yep. You know, and that's what our business is all about. We provide energy, mm. energy solutions so that you don't have to compromise. Yep. And uh, that's our strength. No, you guys have definitely contributed to a happy wife, mate. So. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> okay, let's we run do. through it. Are you are ready you, for this day? I don't think I am because <laughs> from what I heard, it was 10 questions, which I think now is about a million and one. <laughs> a million and so one. So hence a few episodes might be required, but let's get into yes. it. Yes, all, right. all, right. all right. Getting Get stuck straight into it with question number one from Trady Chris on Instagram. Do you need a big system to run just a fridge? No. There you go. That no. was an easy answer. No. Depends what you call big. Yeah. No pun intended there. But, <laughs> um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it depends on what the fridge is and what your expectations are. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a compressor fridge by Dometic in this particular build here in the titanium uh, caravan for us, destinations unknown. And uh, if you're the kind of person who just wants to travel for long weekends and uh, occasionally a little bit longer and you've got the appropriate roof, uh, appropriate solar system on the roof, you know, a 200 amp BTEC might be suffice. In fact, if you're aware of the fact that you're never going to be in one destination for more than a couple of days and you're going to do lots of miles in between, you might get away with 125 amp battery. Yeah. But what would we recommend? Well, with an upright compressor fridge in a caravan scenario, no less than 200 amps is a good place to start. Yeah. And what about a setup like that in... Yeah, so smaller a... fridge. Often it's a chest fridge. I get you guys have got the Dometic upright in there too. Mm -hmm. yep. Is that the 80? 80 110 it is. 110, 110. Yep. yeah. Uh, now you're running a 300 amp battery, but you certainly yep. don't need that for that application. The difference <clears> being is when you set up camp in a caravan, you'll often stay stationary for a longer period of time. So we need to factor that into our choice in battery, yep. minimum 200 amps. In a car, you know, you might get away with 100 amps because even when you're on holidays, you could be traveling on a daily basis. Me personally, with my family, I enjoy going up the beach. So I'll run a chest fridge up to 110 litre in a chest fridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've in the past gotten away with doing that with 125 amp BTEC lithium because that vehicle travels on a daily basis. In a worst case scenario, I mean, opening and closing the fridge 30 times a day, the max you'll probably draw is about five amps, I think, out of a... On average per hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can give you some real numbers on that. Okay. Uh, in my case, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, we're talking 80 litre fridge now, Yep. Uh, compressor fridge, mm-hmm. and uh, three kids, two of which can reach the fridge, <laughs> one cannot. <laughs> like you, darling. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> Which is pretty sad because I'm talking about a five-year-old <laughs> putting that out there. But <laughs> but in fairness, you know that's that's four people: my wife, myself, yep. and my two elder ch- older children accessing the fridge all day, every day. Yeah. And we're averaging around about 40, 45 amps a day okay, over a 24-hour period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of consumption. Yeah. Now, keeping in mind, we've got a DC to DC charger on board, mm-hmm. which is delivering about 45 amps an hour. Okay. So if I'm driving for an hour, I'm replenishing that power. So there you go. Issue, there you go. Issue. Not a problem at all. Is a two hundred or well, bit bit smaller. No. Well, the beauty of having yeah. that bigger battery, the two hundred amp battery, is the fact that if I don't drive for a day or two, my fridge still works. You've just got that more usable power, that long Absolutely. longer period. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Question number two is from Living at Barefoot Wandering on Instagram. What do you look for if solar panels are not charging the batteries? Uh, it's a pretty broad question. Yes. In saying that, there are some real fundamentals here. Uh, Enerdry is renowned for our support. We, we filter through so many calls every day. And a lot of the questions are, my solar's not working, can you help? And uh, I would want to say the first point to look at is, is your battery actually full? Mm. So it depends on how you're yeah, defining yeah. whether yeah. your solar okay. is not working or not. Yeah. <clears throat> if you've got a separate meter and you can see it's not putting in any power or much power, but if your batteries are actually full, that makes sense. It's because your solar controller is doing its job and tapering off the input. But there are other reasons as well. It could be that there is a connection issue for sure. So you would want to, if you had a multimeter, you would want to check the input voltage at the solar controller and the output voltage, which is effectively the voltage of the battery. Now, if your solar controller does not have any battery voltage on it, that means there's a circuit breaker or an isolator mm. of some form that's off. Yep. It could be a BMS turned off inside of a lithium battery. That's there a battery go. management system. <laughs> if there's no uh, voltage on the input side of that solar controller, that could be a failed connection somewhere from the roof to the solar controller. Okay. The obvious things to look out for is weather. Uh, a classic example <laughs> is we often get people upset that they're used to seeing hypothetically 20 amps out of their particular array on their caravan and now we're only getting around five or six and it turns out they're comparing their trip to Cairns versus their trip that they're currently doing in Tasmania and go. it's the middle of winter. Yep. So yep. you know you will see variances that great and is it Three o'clock in the afternoon or twelve o'clock in the middle of the day. Huge variances. So we see solar's only as good as the weather, and you yep. need to be angled to the sun. Hundred percent. Yep. 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 All right. Question number three, David Brown on Facebook. We have in the van one 180 watt solar panel and two 105 amp hour AGM batteries with an external Anderson plug for a solar blanket if needed. Is it worth getting a solar blanket, and is the system big enough for a DC to DC? charger and inverter if so what size inverter bear in mind i don't know anything about how all this works as i haven't found anyone to tell me in layman's terms do you need to read that again no that's okay <laughs> uh, in terms of the solar, you remember, remember all in that in terms of the solar blanket is it worth getting one it depends uh if you have an issue with recovery of power if you're not putting in enough power on a daily basis based on how you travel yes a solar blanket may be beneficial convenience wise if there's roof on the roof just add another panel on the roof if you find that you're constantly looking for shade of environments to camp for peace and for comfort, mm. uh, a loose solar panel may be the options because you yeah. can walk it out and put it in the sun. And you can follow the sun. the sun as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. DC-DC charger, yes. Uh, 210 amps of AGM batteries. You can easily install an Enerdrive DC to DC charger, no question at all. Uh, the beautiful thing about those DC to DC chargers is you can adjust it for your battery chemistry and also adjust the output. So if the ratings on your battery specify hypothetically no more than 20 amps per hour, You've got two, so you can adjust the charger to a maximum output of 40 amps. It's great, isn't so it? So you can actually do it perfect, suited perfect for your battery application. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can dial it up and down easily, Absolutely. very easily. Yeah. Yep. And then obviously, when you're talking about the chem- the chemistry of the battery, you're talking about you can shift it from lithium to AGM. Correct. So how many different variances are there? So of batteries? you can select AGM. You mm-hmm. can select flooded. Yep. You can select the lithium. Yep. Uh, you've also got a program mode as well. The cool thing about program mm-hmm. is you can actually select. Uh, any profile that you want, meaning you dial in the specific requirements. Well, that's really cool. If you've got an AGM battery, let's say you've got 10 AGM batteries Mm -hmm. from 10 different manufacturers, you will find 10 slightly different specified requirements on each one. So rather than generalizing and selecting AGM, you can go to the program mode and actually dial in specifically what you want based on that battery, the literature provided with that battery. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. So if you've got 10 AGMs, just sell them by one lithium, eh? Well, I certainly wouldn't. One 300. I certainly wouldn't want 10 together. (laughs) No, you definitely wouldn't want. It'd be pretty heavy, whatever it is. (laughs) So as for the inverter part of that question, 
dependent on your needs. Mm. Now, that question stated 105 amp AGMs, Miriam, is that correct? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So, I personally would two. not... Yeah, too old. Two, so, yes. I would not go over a 1,000 watt inverter personally. Yeah. Um, you could connect a 2,000 watt inverter. That is a stifling big load for a pair of AGM batteries. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't do it. And if you did do it, you would see your voltage drop radically under load. So if you're running loads that are near 2,000 watts, that's a big ask for those batteries. Yeah. To, to ensure a reasonable life expectancy of the batteries, I personally would not go over 1,000 okay. watts of inverter power. So if we go back to the AGM batteries, 105 amp hour AGM battery, essentially you, you halve that because your voltage drops. Is that correct? Usable power? Usable power, yes. yes. Okay. So we work on 50% right. usable capacity. Okay. Now, the fallacy there is a lot of people misunderstand that statement. Mm -hmm. You can use 100% of the power, yep. but it's not good for the battery. In fact, it's stifling on the battery. Okay. It's a horrible thing to do to a lead So we're not talking battery. about lithium batteries now? No. We're talking lead we're acid. Talking no. lead so acid. whether it's AGM, flooded, calcium, it's irrelevant. Okay. So the rule of thumb is keep them above 50% to ensure some level of acceptable life expectancy. Yep. Naturally, okay. that same battery, if you only ever use the top 20%, it'll last longer than the battery that uses the top. 50%. Yeah, okay. In comparison with lithium, yeah. we always talk about using 80% of the battery. Mm -hmm. And once again, you can use 100% of it, no question at all. You can discharge a lithium battery all the way. You can also discharge an AGM battery all the way. But just like I said for the AGM, you don't want to discharge lithium all the way because yeah. we want to preserve the battery. Yeah. We want it to last a, a reasonable life. You pay good money we, for it. We, you we want, want it to last after for a good, good length of time. Yeah. And yep. so if we run it down to no lower than 20%, that's very kind on the battery. Fine, okay. Yep. So what yep. are we comparing lithium versus AGM? Are there any other key significant differences? Weight is a From huge one. From a sales one. point of view, what, what sells the battery is weight. Weight. Yep. You yep. know, you guys are, are proof of it. Yep. It's a constant challenge to stay within legal payload, yep. you know, and to not overload the tow vehicle. That's right. And that's where lithium really owns the market. But one of the other great benefits is the fact that it can support significant loads. Yeah. So we can run big, heavy, power-consuming items from a lithium system quite safely and soundly. The battery will cope with it. And our, our inverters love it because they're not dealing with significant drops in voltage yep. on the DC side. So our inverters last a really nice life okay. expectancy there as well. Go. So yep. inverters don't like to work under poor conditions. Yes. So you hook them up to AGM batteries, run really big loads, the input voltage drops at the battery, mm -hmm. it's hard on the inverter. Yeah. And that applies to any inverter. Yeah, so okay. lithium has really transformed the market yeah. because we can run big loads and our inverters are capable of doing it as well. There you the go. Batteries can handle yep. it. Mm. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Question number four from Rod Berry on Facebook. What's the thoughts on solar watts to battery amps, i.e. I run 800 watt to 200 amps of battery? Thanks guys, enjoy the day. There is no comparison. Contrary to popular belief, and this one will no doubt get some comments, <laughs> but um, <coughs> it's not fair to say that because I have a 200 amp battery, I need 400 watts of solar, or because I have a 300 amp battery, I need 600 watts of solar. What's fair to say is that when I travel, I have worked out that I'm using approximately 50 amps per 24 hour period. Yeah. And during bad weather, I'd like to ensure that I've got a few days up my sleeve there, and I don't want to run lower than a certain state of charge. Yeah. So it's a mathematical equation. I'm using 50 amps a day. I want three days use, presuming no input because of bad weather. That's 150 amps. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you might decide to go for a 200 amp lithium battery because you know that after three days of poor weather, you haven't run yeah. the battery down to a point that's detrimental to the yeah. cells. Yeah. Likewise with lead acid, if you're using 150 amps, you would perhaps buy a 300 amp bank of batteries for say AGMs, for instance, mm -hmm. because you're not going lower than 50%. Yeah. Therefore, the answer to the solar piece of that question is, well, I'm using 50 amps a day, do the mass, and size up a system that is capable of replenishing 50 amps a day. There you go. And allow yep. a buffer. Allow yep. an extra 20 to 35% is nice. It's yep. ideal. Personally, I'd like to allow an extra 50% in an ideal environment. Yep. Mm. Of course, you're limited by roof space. But naturally, if you could deliver 50 amps a day with say an extra 25 up your sleeve. So if your solar system has the potential to deliver 75 amps a day, that means we're recovering our power on a daily basis. Yep. So we expect to be back to 100% daily. But after a few days of bad weather, if we wish to stay there for another week, we can, presuming yep. the sun's shining, because yep. now we're delivering more than we're using and we're slowly replenishing our battery. Exactly. So that's gonna go back to the crucial component about this whole thing is monitoring. Being able to monitor, monitor the this system. Key. Yep. The monitor's key. Yep. And the reality, so therefore the reality is solar doesn't, isn't decided on batteries and batteries yep. are not decided based on solar. Yep. Batteries, how long do you want your system to run for in bad weather? 
with, with, no, with no input. How much yet. power am I using? Therefore, how big does my solar system need yep. to be? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Question number five from Young Adventures Australia on Facebook. How inefficient is it to run a larger inverter for a small appliance, e.g. running a 1500 watt inverter to charge phones, laptops, etc. Is there a way to work this out? I've now got a 600 watt inverter, pure sine wave, pure sine wave yeah. um, but had a 1500 watt. I've got overkill solar, so I wasn't stressed, but would be interesting to know. It's virtually, it's not an issue nowadays. It was an issue, right. no question. Back in the yeah, day, right. okay. that was a significant issue. So you would be very mindful to buy an inverter specific for the appliance. Right. Meaning, you know, what used to be popular was CPAP machines. That used to be a really key, that was a key item. That oh, jumped. he still hasn't got one. Oh, really? It's a touchy uh, subject, this well, one. Well, <laughs> a CPAP machine used to be a really common product that sort of forced people's hands into investigating inverters. Yeah. So you'd work out the wattage of that CPAP machine, and if you could get away with a 300-watt inverter, that's what you would buy. If you could get away with a 400-watt inverter, that's what you would buy. Nowadays, people tend to buy a 2,000-watt inverter yeah. because there is no great loss. Okay. If you run a smaller mm. appliance, as long as you don't leave the inverter on 24-7, yeah. naturally yeah. that consumes power. But yeah. if you just turn it on for the application, and if you're running a 400-watt inverter versus a 2,000-watt inverter for the same appliance, you'll notice very, very little difference in okay. your consumption. So it's going to work as hard as it needs to, and that's basically it. The luxury it. being that once you've... Exactly. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got the bigger inverter, so on those rare occasions when you want to turn the microwave on, yeah. you still can. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that good. answers the question, yeah? Yes, I think it does. Um, number six is from Brad Shepherd on Facebook. I bought 20 amp, a 20 amp DC to DC charger many years ago. In fact, the serial number was 00007, some nine years ago. <laughs> to this day, it's still going strong. I have just purchased a big setup for my ute, also in a drive being fitted next week. Our new van is coming next week. Being our first van and first lithium setup, except for the ute, how much lithium is really needed to be comfortable <laughs> in a 21 foot van with four, within reason, dollar, dollar, dollar sign, thinking 400 amp and 2600 watt inverter. O for reference there will be an IBIS air conditioner. Thank you. Okay, so IBIS. did they say they were running a 2600 watt inverter? Yeah, they did, yes. Yes, 400 amps. He's thinking of 400 amps batteries and 2600 watt inverter. Okay. What about solar? Obviously, that's going to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's... Yeah. How much is, unfortunately, a bit like saying how long's a piece of string. Yeah. And uh, in saying how long's a piece of string, it's a cheeky answer, right? <laughs> yeah. But it depends on what you're going to do with that system. That's right. And what are you going to do with the inverter? Yeah. You see, inverter represents peak demand. So what's the, the, the biggest potential load we're going to run? Now, if that 2600 watt inverter is in there because we want to run things that consume 2600 watts, like kettles? that's a lot of energy. <laughs> like yeah, I, I would be hesitant on doing that with a 400 amp system, depending on the solar you could put in. It depends on what you want to run. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. it, there's nothing wrong with that system. In fact, we have 2600 watt inverters running on 200 amp VTEX nowadays. Yeah, wow. Because nowadays we're doing that. Yes. Up, up until recently, we were promoting not to do that. But with improvements, we're now doing it daily. Yeah. And uh, we've got manufacturers crazy, who install it? those systems every day. Yeah. But the difference is they know that when they install that inverter against a 200 amp battery, it's there to run the microwave for a couple of minutes. For a couple of minutes, it's not, right. the not there to run the aircon for three hours. No. Yeah. That's no. the difference. So yeah. the answer that, to that question really is it depends on what you want to run and how long you want to free camp for, to be honest, I'm sorry yeah. to say. Uh, my advice on that one is give the guys at Enerdrive a call, run us through all the appliances and items that you want to run mm. and the way you intend to travel. Are you yeah. free camping in one destination for a week long straight? or are you more touring and, and just doing two, three day stints in between? Yep. That'll dictate the answer to this question. Yeah, it's a very, out. very open yeah. question, but isn't it? I must say, 400 amps, 2600 watt inverter for the average family nowadays is a very, very popular system. Very standard, isn't very it? Very standard. So minimum, minimum you'd do is probably 720 watts of solar, put four panels up there. If you can fit it, I would definitely put four panels on the roof. Yeah. So they're or 180 more. watt panels. Yeah. yeah, golden rule, as many solar panels as you can. Like, seriously. If you can justify 400 amps with a 2600 watt inverter, you yeah. should be able to justify at least 720 watts of solar. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. me basing it on an assumption of what you're likely to run in the build, in the van. Yeah. 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 Good answer, mate. Okay. Well, careful I think answer. Oh, yeah. careful answer. That's right. Careful, careful answer. answer. I think that sums it up for the very first yes. instalment. We've gone through the first six questions. So thank you so much for your time. Stick around. Next week we're going to bring you the next, however many questions we get through in under twenty minutes. One million and four. I <laughs> One think. million and four. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.